Today we are on the outskirts of Indore, a city that is touted to be the cleanest in the country. Add to that the beautiful roads that surround this place and it becomes the perfect place to test drive this new car, the Hyundai Aura, a car that has clean emissions as one of its focus points. Not the electric or the hybrid kind of clean, but clean emissions within the price and the spec boundaries that are set by the compact sedan segment. But before we get to the engines that give it these credentials, let's first take a look at the design. Clean or busy? Hard to say. Look at the car as a successor to the Hyundai Accent and it certainly looks busy and trying too hard compared to the understated looks of the Accent. Call it the need of the hour or blame it to the pressure from the competition, the Aura has left no stone unturned to not only stand out from its rivals but also to look different than the Grand i10 Neos that it is based on. Creating those signature fangs by doubling the DRLs in the grille compared to the hatchback, stretching out the taillights to add perceived width, Borrow creases from the Werner's design to accentuate the length, it's done it all. The Aura targets the age group between 29 to 35 and all the radical bits that you see on the design, well they seem to have stemmed from the customer clinics that Hyundai organized with this target group. Overall I think the design looks quite fresh, it looks quite appealing especially if you look at the front. However, the moment you start moving towards the tail, the side profile, all of that, well it loses the steam a bit. I don't particularly like this blacked out C-pillar or the chrome strip that connects the two tail lights. I think it looks a little overdone. This should have been an optional extra. Without that, I think the coupe roof line would have been highlighted better. I also feel that the tail lights could do with lesser panel gaps and should have been set higher and in line with the creases on the side for better aesthetics. By sitting lower, they make the tail look droopy. The tail is clearly not the prettiest angle for the Aura then. This car looks best when viewed from the front three quarters. I like the design of the alloys and the gloss black grille seen here on the turbo variant looks best in my opinion. The cabin is similar in layout and materials to the Grand i10 Neos but features an interesting bronze and white colour scheme which could appeal to many. However, I personally prefer the sportier black and red treatment given to the GDI variant that we drove. The Neos underpinnings bring along a bragworthy kit consisting of wireless charging and three charging ports, an 8-inch infotainment screen with navigation and both smartphone interfaces, and a reversing camera. There's also the Archemis audio unit which sounds great for this price bracket. To give the sedan a premium touch, there are chrome finished door handles and four leather wrapping on the steering and the gear shifter. The rear seat is roomier and more comfortable than the Accent. It's ideal for two adults and gets its own AC vents. This car is ideally for nuclear families. And kudos to Hyundai for offering Isofix style seat mounts as a standard fit. The Aura goes further than the Neos and offers three engine options to choose from. 1.2 litre petrol or diesel, both of which can be had with an automated manual transmission or a 1 litre turbo petrol with a slick 5-speed manual for the relatively more enthusiastic driver. So we are focusing on the 1 litre turbocharged petrol engine. Now that's a new engine for this lineup. I really hope it comes to the Grand Iten Neos as well. We've already experienced this engine in the venue. And why I hope it comes to the Grand i10 is because of its peppy nature. It's a beautiful engine, lovely engine. It also runs quite clean compared to some of its rivals and that is thanks to the direct injection, the small displacement, the turbocharging and all of that. Now this variant or this engine can be identified with that turbo badging that you get on the grille. That's something that I really like, looks quite nice. But what I like even more, like I said, is the peppy nature of this engine. It's a rev happy engine. The turbo kick is felt at about 1800 RPM and that is where the power starts building. But what I also like is there's sort of a second power band that kicks in at about 4000 RPM and it's most noticeable when you are in the third gear and that really makes this engine feel nice and sprightly and that is what makes it quite enjoyable to drive as well. Under 1800 RPM you don't really feel that turbo lag all that much, it's not something that you would complain about. So tractability in the city is quite good.
The engine revs happily till about 5000 rpm, beyond which the enthusiasm sort of tapers off. But between the 2 to 5000 rpm range, the pull is quite strong. And that character is consistent through all of the gears of the 5-speed manual unit that it is mated to. The shift quality of the gearbox is smooth and quite enjoyable when you drive enthusiastically. The gears are set quite tall. Second gear, you can do 100 km an hour without really stressing out the engine. Not like you have to do it, but that also means you don't have to shift gears quite often. Second and third gears are where you're going to spend most of your time while driving in the city. And you don't really have to keep revving this engine. Like I said, you don't really feel a lot of that turbo lag. So you don't have to keep this engine on the boil all the time. And that's a very good thing. Now, when we reviewed the Grand Item, we had mentioned that the car was set up slightly on the stiffer side as far as the suspension was concerned. Now, the engineers tell us the aura has gone stiffer still and the turbo is even stiffer. Of course, these are incremental changes. So, it's not like the car is very difficult to live with or it's going to be very uncomfortable or any of that. No. But yes, you do get that firm edge. You do feel that firmness. If you compare it to the soft and squishy ride that you typically get with Hyundai cars, this one's not that. This one is slightly on the firmer side. That said, the chassis doesn't support the enthusiasm of the engine. The rear overhangs are evident when you drive the car enthusiastically around bends or switchbacks. There is a fair bit of body roll at turn-in, the car goes into understeer and then the rear starts feeling light and skittish. Add a mid-corner bump to the mix and the car quickly unsettles itself. The steering tends to stay light through all of this drama too. If you're buying this car as an enthusiast, we recommend upgrading to a set of 195 section tyres, which will add better cornering grip and will offer better braking too. But the upsizing will take a toll on the fuel economy, which I believe will be around 11 to 12 kilometers to a litre in the city in the real world. If you are a commuter with economy as the primary concern though, going with the proven 1.2 litre petrol or diesel would make more sense depending on your daily running. Despite going clean with the BS6 conversion, the diesel engine is still accessible and offers plenty of value. With the Aura, Hyundai is betting big on two aspects, one of which is the diesel engine. Now, with their arch rivals Maruti Suzuki recently announcing that they will phase out all their diesel operations, all their diesel engines this year onwards. Now, that is a big chunk of market that Hyundai wants to tap in on. And that is why the diesel engine for their uh, Aura or their entire lineup is quite important. The second reason is the prices, the fuel prices. The price difference between petrol and diesel is now widening yet again. It's already reached between 8 to 9 rupees depending on which city you are filling up in and that is only expected to remain or even widen further in the BS6 regime. So Hyundai again believes that once that happens, there will be a lot of demand for diesel engines once again and that is the other reason why they are again betting big on this 1.2 litre diesel. The third reason is that the price difference. Now, with BS6 conversion, most diesel engines are becoming quite expensive. However, Hyundai has managed to maintain the same kind of cost difference between their BS6 petrol and the BS6 diesel engine as they have done in the past with the BS4 variants. And that is quite a commendable feat. So with that, they are not really making their diesel variants as expensive as the BS6 conversion would have expected them to. So again, that's the third reason why they are betting big on the diesel. So with all these combined, they still believe that there will be a large demand for the diesel engine and that is the reason why the 1.2 litre diesel engine is in focus too. It has been upgraded, it's the same 1.2 litre diesel engine that we also got in the previous Grand i10 but this for making it BSX compliant has been given a lot of technological upgrades which makes it cleaner in terms of the emissions but what happens to it in terms of the fuel economy is something that we need to test with a road test because when we did road test the BS6 Elantra, the fuel economy figures had dropped. Does that happen to the BS6 engines that you get in the Aura compared to the BS4s in the Accent or in the Grand Item for that matter is something that we'll find out with a road test. Now, the other big aspect that Hyundai is betting big on is the kind of service and warranty package that they are offering with this car. In terms of the warranty, they are letting you customize the standard available warranty. You can choose between three, four, five years, depending on what is important to you. Is it the duration or is it the number of kilometers that is important to you with respect to what the warranty should cover? And accordingly, you can make a choice. They are saying that with the Grand i10 Neos, most of the people are going with the four or the five year warranty that they have on offer. And that certainly adds to the peace of mind. 
They're also saying that the service cost for this car is pretty low. Now, the numbers that they have told us, well, very frankly, I don't want to believe them. Uh, they sound a little too optimistic. So that's something that I'm going to take with a pinch of salt or maybe with a handful of salt. But as far as the warranty goes, yes, I am pretty convinced that five year warranty package or even the one lakh uh, kilometer warranty package is something that certainly works. And the customizability of it will only add to your peace of mind, depending on what exactly you are looking for. And that's the reason why Hyundai is betting big on this warranty package compared to what the rivals are offering. That said, we don't expect astronomical service costs for this compact sedan either. And nearly 10,000 rupees is our estimate. Like the Grand Item Neos that it is based on, the Aura offers plenty of value over its immediate rivals and its youthful styling could give it an edge over the competition. It's priced rather well and with the three powertrain options to choose from, there's something for every pocket size if you're shopping in the compact sedan space.